what is up everyone how's it going um we're finally back took it took a little uh two-week break here now we're back um and uh doing another film session kendall how's it going man we haven't seen each other in a long time how you been and uh <laughs> how, how'd you think of uh of going through this i know you had a full three weeks here to to really go through this film yeah it's been a, it's been actually a while since i watched this film but i watched it again this morning so we're all refreshed and ready to go obviously this week is star obviously hot button player i guess we kind of missed the hot button a little bit it's a little colder than it was but i hope people are still interested because i'm i'm still intrigued to see what we're going to get from star this year how he's going to help us in in 2021 what it's going to look like what he's going to look like obviously we got the the weight loss to talk about and what that what that might bring yeah how, how do you feel about star yeah i mean i i definitely he's been an interesting topic because it's defensive tackle is such a hard thing and you know a one tech defensive tackle at that um where it's it's a position that's not really going to show up in stat sheets and uh, i feel like a lot of people just aren't really sure about him and then you know with the whole missing otas and um the instagram workout videos uh some of some of our guys were a big fan of but you know it's it's it it is kind of hot button just because um you know he's, he's taking a year off of football and he is a little lighter i think that weight might 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 play a bit of a factor into the season um so it'll be interesting to see if that does play any of a effect and there's some plays in at least in my clips where um where you can kind of see he's using that weight to his advantage so um but yeah i was um i was you know, it was interesting. I don't think I was impressed as I as I thought I would be with the film, to be honest. Yeah, that's I mean, funny. I I I was like, when I when I put my tape together, I was thinking I was gonna play the devil's advocate role, and I was gonna be the guy that's just shitting on Star, just saying he's awful, he's trash. I put my tape together. I watched a game that I thought the Bills had a lot of rushing yards allowed in, and he played really well. He he really he. He surprised me, at least in in my tape. And then I turned on yours and I saw how you started it. And I was like, ooh, I don't think Clay's gonna like him too much. And then on the tail end, though, I actually think it started to it started to come around. You started to yeah. see uh where he's going to impact this team and how he makes plays for others behind him and even just around him. So it's it's a very interesting evaluation because you think it's simple to evaluate a defensive tackle because their job is literally just like take the guy up in front of them, contain them, whatever you have to do to distract them from what's going on behind you, make plays for others or make plays yourself. But Star's a little bit different because he's that one tech and he's kind of being selfless in his play. So sometimes you have to watch other people that aren't him to watch what he's doing, if that makes any sense. But mm -hmm. It's an interesting evaluation for sure. Yeah, I think if anything, um, watching through kind of showed me what he's, you know, he he has a role. And when he, you know, when he knows his role and he he can do his role really well, but there are some things that he's just not going to be able to do and we just can't expect him to do. Right. Um, so I think that was something where I was kind of like, you know, as I'm going through some of the plays, I'm like, am I expecting too much of him to try to make this kind of a play when it's, you know, he's a one tag guy. He's not. You know, he's not Aaron Donald. No one is Aaron Donald except Aaron Donald. So, right. you know, it's um, it's tough sometimes. Yeah, I guess based on the sounds of it, it sounds like I was viewing him in the scope of, yeah, he's just going to be a boring old one tech. And you were kind of viewing him in the scope of, I want to see disruption from this mm -hmm. big behemoth getting in the backfield, doing everything, pushing everything in his path out of his way. So it'll be interesting to see how we both talk about him. Yeah, definitely. You want to jump right in then? Whose game was first? Who do you want to start with here? Um... Let's start with mine. Okay. Uh, I think my game was first. Uh, I can't yeah, even Browns? remember now. Yeah. It's two seasons yeah. back. Yes. I think Browns. Uh, you did the Browns. I did the Ravens. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't planned that we just happened to do a couple of AFC North teams. Um, but uh, I did mine based on snap count, actually, was what I was looking at for. Uh, Interesting. So, um, yeah, let's let's take a look at yours then. We'll put that right up here. So for my tape, I exclusively tried to pull run run plays. I wasn't really trying to show a whole lot of his pass rushing stuff. I did toss a couple pass reps in there, but I'll just preface it off this way. He didn't look good when it came to rushing the passer. He was literally just pushing the pocket, doing nothing else but bull rushing. So I figured I could just tell you that instead of wasted play out of my 10. 
Um, I'm glad so, yeah. you said it. I don't have to say it for mine either now. So <laughs> I did put a couple of plays in um, where, you know, it's ex in examples so you can see it for yourself. Right. I, I, I didn't, I figured <clears throat> one of us would have a pass yeah. rush rep. I didn't want to, I didn't want to waste a lot of negative speak on just what he is as a pass rusher, but we'll jump into what he is as a run stopper. And uh, I, I just really right off the bat here on play one, the way he just eats up double teams is, is different. It's it's really different. And this play isn't even a good play. Like this is not a highlight for star, but the fact that he's taking up two blockers at the beginning of this play. And like, I wish he could have gotten a little bit more 75 and kind of forced that issue got on the, the left shoulder of 64 and truly get in between those two guys and occupy them, but he can't. And then he gets knocked over. But the fact like, the fact that he is able to do that, he stands his ground. He really only loses like a yard of depth into the, uh, from the line of scrimmage. And he, he does kind of occupy them and make some, make some room available for the, uh, the second level. The problem is he falls over and the entire pursuit, like he loses balance and the entire pursuit is dead after that and creates a wide open run lane. Yeah. For me, um, it's funny that, um, I actually didn't like this play. Um, and mostly because this is a, the type of play for me with your one tech where I want more out of him. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, it's, it's, it's not, it's asking a lot uh, to be able to, I, instead, I think, I think he needs to attack more of 75 here and get between those guys a little bit more, yeah, maybe get right. a hand in the Jersey a little bit. Um, Cause seven, five breaks away and gets to Matt Milano. And, and he's really the one that opens up that hole. So um, I think if star was able to maybe tie him up a little bit longer yeah. and maybe get Milano to be in the gap when the, when he's met by the guard there. Um, and then, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. He, everybody just kind of gets into a big pile and falls over yeah. after that. So you can't really do much about that. But um, but I will agree with everything that you said still about him uh, eating up double teams like that, because even I put a, a few clips in where he just he is an anchor and he, he really doesn't give a lot of ground when he's um, when he's facing double teams. But, yeah, this one, I think, um, as that one tech, I want I wanted to see him keep that linebacker clean a little bit more. Absolutely. He definitely, he definitely leaves a lot left to be desired on this play specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll jump into play two and I'll show you one of the few passing reps we got here. Uh, he doesn't even rush the passer on this play. I actually put this in here because it was just surprising to see him do something like this. He yeah. obviously, we don't look at him through the lens of being the most agile defensive tackle out there, but just look at the play recognition. You know, he sees the drop back steps from Mayfield. You see how he's not really, you know, shoulders square anywhere. He's kind of, his his shoulders are telling you something different than his feet. You know, Mayfield, you see him, like that's not mm -hmm. normal footwork for a right. typical drop back. Like right. it, it seems like something's up. It's a screen and he gets out in the flat and yeah, he doesn't make the tackle on Kareem Hunt, but because he gets there, he allows his teammates to make the tackle at a reasonable depth. Uh, I think it was only like a two, three yard gain. So really the, the thing to hang your hat on with this play is just play recognition. That mm -hmm. That's what you're going to get from a vet. Like, yeah, can Harrison Phillips do that? Maybe, but less experience, less uh, examples for him to really understand, hey, this is how a quarterback tends to do this when he's dropping back on a screen. Little things like that. I have more confidence in a vet picking up those little, the little minutia of what it, what it is to defend against something like that. So I thought that was very encouraging. Yeah, I like that one as well. Um, I think it, the, the play recognition is just really good. Um, he had pretty decent athleticism from a big dude getting out there. You know, you'd like him to finish. But yeah. um, like you said, it's, it's an elusive guy back there, man. It's not He's not easy to tackle um, in the open field like that. He made a nice move. But um, yeah, I, I I thought this was a fine play, and yeah, one of the one of the few pass rush um, <laughs> reps where he actually does well. But yeah, that that recognition was was really impressive. Yeah, definitely, definitely the reason I put it in there. But mm. uh, we'll move on to play three, and it's it's back to a bit of a negative. I I really just didn't like how quickly he got sealed off on this play. He was so good in this game, reading the flow of the offensive line and his his ability to just kind of get in front of the play and force a cut back into the the, the meat of the defense and really make his teammates available to make a tackle. Um, but on this play, he just gets beat to the point of the attack. Like the entire offensive line is flowing left. It's, it's an outside, it's an outside run and he just can't get on the outside shoulder of um, I think it's the center that locks him up. Yeah. That's what's mm -hmm. so concerning. It's the center who starts to the right of star 
and star lets the center get all the way to the left of him and seal him off. Like mm -hmm. that's, what's so concerning to me, but Hey, maybe this is where that little bit of weight loss comes into play and he's a little bit faster off the snap and he can, he can really get off and break that seal before it's established. So yeah, I was, I was definitely disappointed by this play. Yeah, it always hurts losing on a uh, on a reach block um, where he just where he's able to cross your face like that and yeah. and and seal you off. Um, yeah, it's it's tough. I, I would like to have seen yeah maybe a better push off the line. Maybe you drive him straight backward into the running back. Um, you know, would have been nice to see to see something um, something a little more out of him there. Also, a pretty bad hold on. I think that's Shaq loss in there, but. Um, probably didn't help the play as a whole might it might have kind of turned the play back into star um if Shaq was able to make a play there but you know um yeah that's that that one kind of hurts a little bit yeah definitely definitely left a little bit to be desired there and that's supposed to be something that he's he's really good at you know defending the run but it is an outside run so right. you can kind of understand a little bit more than that you know typical yeah. halfback yeah. dive going right through the a gap Right. That was the thing too, is the, the play's not, he's designed to basically be out of the play from the start because you're going to yeah. the outside as well. So. Exactly. So we'll jump to play number four and really the, the thing I want to highlight, especially with play number four and play number five is I don't know if anyone remembers this, this goal line stand against the Browns, but it was crazy. It was like 11 plays in a row and the bills didn't let up points. Um, it, it was just nuts, but star had, two out of those like eight or nine, 10, whatever, how many plays it was goal to go. Uh, there were two specifically play four and five that I just had to put in here. Cause he, he didn't make the play, but he was disruptive and he took away a running lane. Like look at him, just drive that offensive lineman back. Like that's what three yards of depth into the backfield. And yeah, like I said, he doesn't make the play, but he takes away a run lane. He takes away a cutback lane and forces it into all of the Bills defenders. There's nowhere for Nick Chubb to run. So really just love the disruption and the ability to just blow up a play in the backfield. Yeah, it's funny. I forgot about this whole goal line stand uh, until I started watching this and got to play four. Um, and I was like, he's. I know that there were at least a few plays where he probably just destroyed the offensive line. Uh, and yeah, the, I mean, not much else to say other than he, he, just, he just put the guy in the ground. So um yeah, that's the center too. Is that the guy that was reach blocking him? Earlier? Exactly. It's the same kind of thing again. It's the reach block. Like he's starting outside yeah. of him and he's taking the fight to the center instead of letting the center come to him. Right. And that's yeah. why I like this play so much more. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 a really good play. There's I there's nothing bad that I can say about it. Even though I do feel like I'm trying to take that negative side again <laughs> and try and really play the um play the counterpoint here. Um you can't you can't say anything bad about that. Yeah. And here it is again on play five, same kind of disruption. It's just so similar. I actually think this was the last play of the whole thing. Uh, that might've been, yeah, it looks like based on how they're celebrating. I think that was the last of like the nine plays, but that's another play. That play is designed to go outside. That's another one. Mm -hmm. Another one. Like we were talking about where he's supposed to be taken out of this play and he, he gets in the backfield. He gets disruptive. Any cutback lane that was possible is taken away. You see him try and cut it back inside of Milano, and he just can't because it's just it's clogged. And that's what penetration into the backfield does, especially when you're not getting outside of your rush lanes and your gap integrity. Like he he is really in his rush lane, and he's just driving back through where the design of the play is intended to go. And it's just a great job again. And that's that's hopefully what we're going to get a lot more of this year when it comes to those goal line situations and just for some field goals instead of instead of touchdowns right yeah i don't know if it's if it's the goal line that adds a little extra motivation but uh yeah his 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 speed off the line the how fast he gets off and immediately gets into the power um is just really impressive on those two reps yeah that's that's exactly what you like to see but here on play six this is where i was pleasantly surprised with him in this game and actually i think a couple plays on yours this dude's lateral movement skills are really surprising to me. I was not expecting this kind of stuff. Like we've already said it twice now, the amount of times that the Browns are trying to get on the edges of this Bills defense and not really run through the gut. It's probably because they don't want to run into star. But if you're trying to run away from him like this, go outside star has the lateral movement skills to go along that line of scrimmage. Like it's really, I, I didn't expect it. And on this one, uh, if you could play it back from the sideline angle, 
he I'm pretty sure he's running along the line of scrimmage there at the 22 yard line. He's not losing any depth, but he's, he's not at the 23. He's not at the 24. He's still at the 22 yard line running laterally with the play. Once again, I'd like to see him make that tackle. He really had an opportunity to make that tackle. And it was just an arm tackle. You can play it through the end zone camera for a uh, better angle at that. But once again, this is an area where maybe if he loses five pounds, like we, like he said he did in the press conference, he's just a hair faster, a half step faster, and it's not an arm tackle there. It's a true tackle with the entire body, the shoulder, whatever, whatever it may be, and he'll get more meat on that tackle. So really, this is a very encouraging sign for me. I was not expecting to watch this tape and see this kind of lateral movement from him. Yeah, I was I was surprised by this as well. And yeah, you, like you said, there was a clip I put in uh, in mine of a little bit of lateral movement too. Um, and yeah, I mean, the only all you got to say from there is make the tackle um, because because everything else is great. Uh, he gets off the line well, engages well, you know, runs with him all the way, and has control the whole way. So yeah, I mean, there, there's not there's not really much more you could ask for except uh, except finish in there and and yeah. making it a no gain run. Yeah, definitely would like to see the tackle there, but. Hopefully that's where we see improvement this year. Uh, play number seven. This is, I believe, the last pass rush rep I put on here. Uh, first, last, whatever you want to call it. He's really just pushing a double team. Uh, the only reason I put this one on here opposed to the other ones is because he's pushing a double team opposed to kind of just being anchored by a double team. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's extremely underwhelming. He's, he's not really getting to the quarterback. He's not really doing a whole lot. But he is getting depth into the backfield and collapsing that pocket. Um, we know Baker Mayfield is a shorter quarterback. That kind of disruption will, you know, affect the pass in some sort of way in terms of getting rid of uh, passing angles, like you saw him put his hand up and even taking away uh, visual passing lanes. So, all in all, I'm not expecting much from this guy in pass rush situations. But if he can collapse the pocket and really really push those linemen back into the quarterback's lap. Um, that's all I'm asking from him in terms of pass rushing situations. I just hope we don't see him a hell of a lot on those pass pass rushing downs. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be much of a, much of a pass rush guy really. Um, and, you know, based on everything we've seen and said so far, um, but this is a pretty good rep and this is really all you're going to eat. All you ask if you're one tech to do um, in, in, in pass defense, like this is just to, to get, take the double team and push him back into the pocket. Um, you know, and they just drafted a couple of young guys on the outside. So push them, push the inside in force some outside and let the young guys take care of it from there. Um, that's, that's exactly what you want. So I, I, nothing else bad to say about this one either. Um, you know, taking on a double team against, this is a very good offensive line by the way, as well. That yeah. Was that was against style. Wyatt Teller. I think too, yeah. that, that 77 there on the double team. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like you said, not, not much more you can really expect from, from a one tech on a play like that. So we'll jump here to play seven. And this is really just another example of the, his run stopping prowess. This isn't a good play from him, but you can see his, uh, his play recognition, his attention to detail and kind of how he, he knows how to stack and shed blockers to get to places before he needs to even get there. You can see Ch uh, that's not Chubb. That's Kareem hunt try and take it through the a gap and star stacks and tries to shed the blocker and go, go lean into that a gap to make it harder. And he does it just a little bit too early. And I mean, I don't even want to say he does it a little bit too early, but hunt just doesn't really hit the hole. Cause it closes up real quickly because of what started. And I believe that was Edmonds who was occupying that center. Yeah, it was. And uh, yeah, Chubb just bounced it right outside of him through the B gap. So it's not a great play in terms of what, stars doing uh output wise but i i just like the skills like the one-on-one -on -one skills that he possesses like the fact that you can see hey if he has to two gap he has the ability to two gap and in in regular situations if he really does have both gaps to to be responsible for um i if there's more space there i think he makes that play or at least trips him up uh but unfortunately he he just can't he can't get a clean shot at the running back and it gets bounced outside to the B gap. Yeah. Um, I was, you know, I had, I had trouble figuring out whether or not I like this play, dislike this play. Cause there are some good things and some bad things going on. Um, first of all, 
he's not supposed to be going for the double team here. That's not his assignment. Um, he's lined up in in more of a, a three tech position. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's not he's not supposed to be touching the center. That's not his job here. So we don't have to worry about him letting the center get to Edmonds. That's not his job here. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it's pretty good stack. I mean good engagement. He's got good leverage and everything. And then he commits. And um, really, I mean, Kareem Hunt kind of, kind of gets lucky because he bounces off his own center a little bit right. and uh, it ends up putting him in a perfect spot now that star has, has committed into that hole. So, um, you know, a little bit of, of bad luck mi- mixed with bad timing. You know, it's, I, I don't think the play was terrible. Um, and I do like what you said, you know, he, he had good hands and good strength here to be able to, to shut off. And if he was able to get through that hole instead of running into a center, then he would have mm-hmm. made the play there. So, yeah, that that's the main thing. Like you said, it is a mixed bag of a play because output, like looking at what happened, he wasn't effective. He didn't make a play, but there were little parts of, what happened on that snap where you're like, okay, I can see, I can see some skill here from star. And I, I'd, I'd like to get more of that in 2021. Right. Um, so jumping on to play nine, I'm going to continue to echo this, this sentiment of him and play recognition. Uh, I, I really liked his, his ability to understand like how the Browns are trying to attack them and attack them on the edges of the defensive line. He quickly tries to get out there again. You see him like, just understand that they're trying to get to the C and the D gaps. And he just pushes the pile over there as quick as possible. And it just really, all I can say is just that play recognition to then that turns into narrowing the run gap. He just, he tightens the intended run gap for Nick Chubb and you see Micah Hyde and essentially everyone else on the defense just converge on that run gap. So I, I'm not going to sit here and say that that play is made, by star but he certainly helps make that play yeah it's it's i was i was kind of wondering myself during this play is the center pulling on this play it kind of looks like everything's pointing to the center is actually supposed to be going through and leading through the hole here but yeah. Star kind of holds him up i don't know if that's actually the if that's actually the player if they're all just supposed to be kind of reach blocking and that's why he's going that direction um but if i mean you know regardless the his his ability to push back his guy and get in there the only thing i want is him to get his hand out there and get a hand on uh on chubb there as he's passing through the hole um is mm. just a little late but uh yeah it, it was good recognition um decent power and yeah if i mean if he if he held that center from pulling like i guess that i'm not sure if that's what it is because if it was yeah. it wasn't a very good pull um but uh yeah it's hard that's to a really that's a really interesting observation because now that you've replayed I mean, it a it couple times, kinda, it, you could talk about it on. Like that's the way that he's heading, right? I mean, yeah, you could talk about it on either side, but like based on what we've seen already from this game, and I mean, I watched the whole game. They were reach blocking a lot, but based on his technique here, I can't really tell. Like it seems like he's trying to go upfield. The only thing is, like, wouldn't he fight through that designed run gap and try to get to the next level sixty four? You know, wouldn't it seems like he's just late to get on that reach block, so he's just kind of trying to seal off star as best be. as he can. Yeah, that's like I'm not sure that's a proper pull because it, yeah. it's you know he would try to get through there cleanly, not right. really care about what the assignment is behind him, yeah. and just get through that intended and be the lead blocker. But mm. here it kind of seems like he's just trying to occupy and like seal off. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The fact that he engages it all with him right away probably says this wasn't a pull. Um, and just a bad attempt at a reach block, but that's good. You blew up the reach that's block, star, and you, right. you made it. You made us not even know what the guy's supposed to be doing. So, um, <laughs> so that's that's pretty good play for him then. <laughs> All right, we'll get to our the last play here from um, from this Browns game, and yet again, it's just I like I like his play recognition again, just understanding that they're trying to attack the edges of this defense in the run game, and he he forces the issue meets meets the uh, the offensive lineman at the point of attack and doesn't allow the line of scrimmage to get reestablished into the bills defense. He keeps it exactly where it is and laterally pushes him, keeps control along that line of scrimmage. Like he forces the cut back there from, I believe that's Nick Chubb and forces him right back into Shaq Lawson. Fortunately, Shaq Lawson can't make the play, but you see like, because he over pursued star did because he over pursued, it forces a cut back into the meat of the defense. And, I mean, yeah, I'd like to see Shaq make that play and make it only like a two, three yard gain instead of a five, six yard gain, but started his job. He made the play for his teammates by over pursuing, by forcing the issue. 
Yeah, I um, I, the only thing that I that I didn't like about this play with Star is that I want him to shed and make the tackle. Um, he is being held pretty bad here too. It's not noticeable because they're kind of like locked up and engaged with each other. But if he tries to swim, if he tries to like swim underneath or anything, that 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 blocker's either got to let go or take a holding penalty because he's he's grabbing that that uh, inside shoulder there pretty good. Um, I yeah, that's that's kind of my only thing is right here. I want you to shed and get a hand on him, slow him down. You know, maybe if you if you get one hand on him, maybe Shaq Lawson could make the tackle, <laughs> um, even though he just kind of bounces off of him anyway. Um, right but, off of him. Yeah, uh, you know, I that that's that's kind of my only real complaint with this one is is I'd like to see him at least make an attempt there because at the very least you might have got a holding call out of it. So that's a good point. I think that's the the point to drive home. Like if he makes more of an effort to even like flail and try and make a tackle and make himself right. look silly, he right. draws the flag, and mm -hmm. then that's that's a positive. He made the play even without making the tackle. So. Yeah, that's that's the Browns. Uh, that's his game against the Browns. I was actually shocked to see how how well he played because I tried to pick a game uh, where he had a lot of snaps and the Bills had a lot of running yards allowed. Um, there was that early run that Nick Chubb had down to like the three, four yard line. I think it was like play four or five or something like that. But um, that was like the chunk of rushing yards allowed when star was on the field. I really didn't have a lot of overwhelmingly negative plays in that game to uh, sift through that. I wanted to put in there because they're just, he didn't provide me negative plays in the running game. Like I said, in the passing game, whole nother story. Like I literally showed you guys his best pass rush of the game against that double team. And then the second best one wasn't even a pass rush. It was him just recognizing that screen out in the flat. So Really, what I can gather from from just that game, I felt like I, I'm really excited to get a run stuffer back in this defense. He's not going to be a world beater. He's not going to be the silver bullet to fix this defense or anything like that. But he's going to help us mitigate that that deficiency in in run stopping. And even something the Bills defense improved on going into the playoffs, we actually did get a lot better in in defending the run. Yeah, it's. Um... Yeah, I think you put it pretty well. He's not a game breaking guy. He's not a guy that's going to come in and and turn Ed Oliver into a into a ten sack three tech. Um, you know, he's not going to turn Tremaine Edmonds into you know the the best linebacker in the league by keeping him clean from from linemen and stuff like that. He's he's not that kind of a guy. He can contribute and he'll make he'll create more opportunities for those guys though. You know, in those those few more opportunities that come per game is if one of those is taken advantage of, that could be that could be a turning point in the in the game for all we know. So he does add definitely an element, I think, and um and we saw a decent amount, um, yeah, mostly in that run game and, and the way he anchors himself like that on uh, on those double teams which i i'm, I'm going to touch on as well yeah um yeah I, you know i, I do th i i really liked star and i thought i thought ed was kind of um kind of kind of benefited a lot from star and i think he did um but i don't think it was as much as i had originally thought when i when i went back and actually watched it um but yeah uh do you want to jump right into the other one or you want to uh is no we want to bring up we can do that. I just want to make one comment on literally what you were saying about him making Edmonds and Oliver better. I think you, you hit it on the head perfectly, like jumping off and piggybacking off what I said about him not being a world beater, being the silver bullet for this defense. He's mm -hmm. not. But like you said, he like he's not going to be the reason that Oliver or Edmonds gets better. The reason Oliver or Edmonds gets better is because they just simply pro progress and develop. They get better. But star will help like like john herring says here star, star is going to be a clogger oliver mm -hmm. will benefit though they mm -hmm. will benefit but ultimately the thing that pushes ed oliver and tremaine edmonds over the top is making the most out of those opportunities where star just makes it a little bit easier for them it, right. it like star isn't going to make those guys superstars he's just going to make it a little bit easier for those guys to become superstars and put them into better scenarios than they were in last year that's that's really where I sit with Star. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a really good point. And yeah, clogger is probably a good word to yeah. use to describe him because there are times when it's like he'll just create havoc. He'll it's, he just kind of creates a wall right there in the middle of the field sometimes when he's um when he's when he's facing those double teams. So, um, but yeah, let's let's hop right into this one then. Uh, yeah, so I did uh, I did the Ravens game. 
Um, this is one. Um, it's it's a little weird because I did I put some 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 pass rush in here as well, and it's Lamar Jackson. So pass rushing against Lamar Jackson is different than pass rushing against essentially anyone else in the, in the league. Um, so we have to keep that into account that he might be rushing differently because it's Lamar. Um, that was kind of the only thing really. Um, but I wanted to see something where it, he would be facing a lot of run, and then also I wanted to see what he did against the pass in that situation. So um, play one here. Let me get my notes out quick. Um, play one here. We're going to start out with a couple plays actually, um, in, uh, in, 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 uh, pass rush. Didn't mean to do that. Um, we're going to start with a couple plays here in pass rush. Um, and this one we've got, um, it's, this is one where when you're in one-on-one -on -one coverage as, as a, as a defensive tackle, as a one tech, I want to see you win those the majority of the time because that forces teams to put the double team on you in the future. That's the whole that's the whole purpose of being that big one tech guy. It's like, well, we need to put two guys on him because one guy cannot handle him. Um, so that's kind of my philosophy on what makes a successful one tech. And um, we just don't really see it here. Um you know, it's it's not it's not a terrible play by any means, but he's just not really doing much. He's kind of just engaging, waiting around, and that could be because it's Lamar Jackson again. Um, but you know, it's I, I'm not too impressed. He's not really moving hands. He's not really pushing much. It's just kind of he's just kind of there. Um, what, what was your thought on this one? Well, I think you put it really well by prefacing this whole thing that they have to pass rush differently against Lamar Jackson. We saw it last year in the in the playoff game, and we see it here. They they have to maintain integrity in their pass rush lanes because if they if they get too wide if they commit too too hard to one of the offensive lineman's shoulders it creates a wide open rush lane for Lamar Jackson we we all know how quickly he can gash you in the scramble game so we do have to take this a little like a little bit more with a grain of salt but like you said like relative to expectations for a one tech if you're going one on one with someone. Like, I really want to see you blow them back into the quarterback's mm -hmm. lap. Like, if it's a double team, I have a lot more reservations, and I'll I'll hold back a little bit more on, on my expectations in terms of a bull rush. But he just kind of gets flushed out and, like, thrown, thrown to the side of the pass rushes or thrown to the side of pass protection is just garbage, you know? I think that's, like, Patrick McCarry. He's, like, the... I think he's the backup dude who came in for Yonda a couple years ago when Yonda was on his way out the door. Like he he's not someone that's like a world beater at center. He's he's a very replacement level center who's been making it work in a Greg Mo Roman running offense. He's not someone I want to see winning one on ones against Star. So I I was definitely upset with this play relative to those expectations that you laid forth. I want to see defensive tackles win one-on-ones and he, mm -hmm. he just didn't, he didn't win that one-on-one. -on -one. Right. And that's what, that's the thing is, you know, that that's, that's your job is to win those one-on-ones. And I think Ed does a pretty good job when he does that. Um, Phillips, you know, is, is taking on the double team here, but, um, but yeah, I wanted to see a little bit more push here. And then uh, the next place is, is a bit more of the same as well. Um, just kind of a, uh, it's kind of a, a, a lazy, pass rush attempt it's a little bit better he does he does kind of make a move at the end here mm -hmm. he tries to kind of swim around a little bit i think um but yeah you know i want i want to see a little bit more out of that and i understand jerry hughes uh loves to crash down as hard as he can um and maybe he knows that and he's like okay well i gotta contain a little bit because jerry hughes is in the middle of the pocket now um so that that, that could be a, a part of of what's going on in his head as well um but yeah it's it's just kind of I want to see, I want to see a little more. I want to see him win those more often. I got to say this is a nice uh nice way to scheme it up by the Ravens offense. You just leave Star on the one-on-one -on -one and then double team Ed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, kind of makes sense if if Star's not going to win his one-on-ones, why would you double him? Just let the one-on-one -on -one maintain him and then Ed's no longer a problem cuz he's stymied by a double team. Right. I just Yeah. It's it's really annoying to see your defensive tackle not win one on ones at all. Like you said, I like that he's actually trying to put a move on him here instead of just like relentlessly going for a bull rush that isn't really going to do anything. But this didn't even do anything, you right. know. So I don't know. The pass rush thing leaves so much to be desired. But then that rolls back into hey, maybe that's why he, he lost a little bit of weight. Maybe that's try 
why he's trying to get a little bit more agile. So he's not just a straight bull rush guy. He's someone that obviously still has that in him, but he's going to be a little bit more quick twitchy, a little bit more uh, agile and able to swim and kind of avoid those, those heavy hands from offensive linemen instead of just trying to fight through them. Yeah. And um, I like what you said about, you know, kind of Ed, Ed's being double teamed here because they're not, they're not worried enough about, um, about stars. So they're going to double team Ed and they're going to let the pulling guard take care of Murphy. Um, yeah. And that's, that's that really. So um, yeah, you, 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 you want to see more out of your, out of your defensive tackle there when, when you're the big guy that's supposed to be eating those double teams. Right. All right. This one is uh, more of an example of this is what I want out of my one tech. This was a really good play. Um, and I was actively looking for negative plays, but when I see a good play, I have to put it in. Um, and this one, he engages the double team really well um, right off the bat. I'm going to slow this down as much as I can. Engages double team really well um, and then just throws that guy off of him and makes a really good tackle when he sees the guy in the hole. Um, it's just a really good aggressive play where that, how he explodes um, through those two guys and then breaks off of both of them because that center is supposed to break off and get Milano who's now there. Um, and he just, he's a, he's a clogger, you know, he, he really just clogs everything up right here. Uh, and that's exactly what you want your one tech to do. I think this is a really good play. I actually think that's Marshall Yonda. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that guard that he just threw aside is Marshall Yonda. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is exactly that what you want to see from that one tech. Yeah. There's he's allowing, he's allowing the tackle to be made past the line of scrimmage. You can start to get negative about all this stuff, but he just took on a double team. Didn't allow the line of scrimmage to get reestablished. He hung right around that line of scrimmage and he shed the double team and made the play. Like there is nothing more you could be asking for from your one tech. That's picture perfect. Exactly how you draw it up. That is their responsibility on runs inside the B gaps. That's exactly what, what you want from him. So nothing but great, nothing but great things to say about this play. Yeah. And even still, um, you know, he also not only makes the play himself, um, but by blowing up this double team, um, the center's not able to get a good block on Matt Milano. I'm both of those guys, the, the guard on the other side tries to break off as well. Um, but then Micah Hyde on the other side is also freed because no one can really disengage to get to the second level because he just blew up that double team. Um, so yeah, that was just, um, th this was just one where I had, you have to put it in because it's really good play. So yeah, you gotta. Um, this is another one. This is this is just kind of the the double team engaged. There's not really much going on. The play's going away from him and everything. But this is um, just kind of his. He doesn't really give much on double teams. He maybe will go back a yard, maybe mm -hmm. two yards. But that's a oh, who just leveled that? That was guy? Lorenzo. That was <laughs> I didn't Lorenzo. Even see that before? Neither did um, I. Yeah, but he takes up this double team uh, very nicely and then sets up Lorenzo Alexander now, who's flying True. through that hole to hit a guard who's not really prepared to to, to break off because that double team was so good. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of those situations where that's the keeping your linebackers clean. Uh, you know, Lorenzo helps himself out a little bit by giving him a shoulder. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that that's what you want to do. You want to force those guys to not want to leave that double team in order to go get that linebacker. Um, so this was another play where it's just taking up that double team and run defense was really good. And if, you know, I think this was this was an option play. If he does hand the ball off here, that's going absolutely nowhere. And Star would be the reason for that. You you took my note. Now that, that was my note. <laughs> uh, that was literally the main thing with this play is like, yeah, of course we could beat the drum all day of him eating double teams and clogging on on double teams. But the fact of the matter on this play is if if Lamar doesn't pull it out of Mark Ingram's gut right there the play is made by star and then because of star Lorenzo Alexander. So that that's really my focus right there. It's he did his one eleven by clogging that, that a gap right there. So nothing more you can ask from, from your one tech. He's, he's right where he needs to be. He's eating up the, the blocks he needs to and freeing up, freeing up plays for the guys at the second level. So I, I love that play, even though he did literally nothing in terms of the, the outcome of that play. Cause right. if it went to Ingram, that that's a one yard gain. Yeah, exactly. And that's, um, that's, that's like you said, exactly what you want out of the one tech. So I was really, I was really happy with that one when I saw that, um, especially when, when I realized that, yes, that play would have gone nowhere if he had let it go. So, mm -hmm. 
Uh, play number five here. Um, this is another one where I like everything about this play except for the fact that he doesn't make it. Um, yeah. Because this is another one of those plays where he – He's fairly athletic. He's running with him. He knows where the play is going. He's got it recognized. And then he just keeps going toward the sideline. I'm not sure why he doesn't even attempt to kind of shed that block there and go inside. And, you know, it's a similar situation where if he's grabbing you awkwardly or something like that, you try to go inside, you get a hold call. You know, it's 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 at least worth a try to, to, to make a move and go inside there instead of just – continuing your path to the sideline which is exactly where that lineman wants to take you so yeah um that was kind of my only real gripe with this i do like that he kept on forcing the play wider and wider and wider and forced to cut back in that is also something that you want to be able to do is force force him into your teammates um but uh even the linebackers over pursuit anyway so it didn't yeah end up working that's out. my that's my <laughs> thing to me it's like he did his job he mm. he got out there he did the same thing that i was praising him for in the browns game that i was so pre- pleasantly surprised about he, right. he sh- showed lateral movement skills while uh keeping and maintaining that line of scrimmage right. he got out to the edge and forced the cut back back inside and look at milano and edmonds like yeah. I'm pretty sure Edmonds started more outside than, or sorry, Milano started more outside than Edmonds. Look how fast Edmonds just rushes all the way outside. Yep. Well, like, he's he's recognizing where the play is, is supposed to go, he but is, Star but blew the play up, and now it's gone that's, back That's the other where way. it's like the gap integrity is so yeah. important. Like you allow your defensive linemen to do that, and you maintain your run gaps. I don't want to get into freaking film session on Tremaine Edmonds now, but. I mean, to me, that play was was made by Star for Tremaine Edmonds, and Tremaine Edmonds took himself out of the play. Yeah, I don't get me wrong; that. I still love Tremaine Edmonds. This yeah. is 2019. So. Yes, yeah, this is, this is 2019. <laughs> Tremaine, we've already done his. Go, go watch it. Um, we'll, we'll we'll we don't need to talk about him anymore. No, we don't. But uh, but yeah, I would have liked to see once again just a little little more effort at the end of the play and trying Absolutely. to make that tackle. And that was kind of the only real thing that um, that I had an issue with here. The rest of the play was very good in his part. So no, you're definitely right about that. Especially drawing those holding calls, you're definitely right yes, about that. Yeah, and you know it's it's better than nothing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Here we go. This is another. Um, uh, pass rush. This one I was much more pleased with. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. actually doing something. He's actively pass rushing. He's doing it from the one tech spot. Um, that's what his his hands are so much more active here. Um, this was just a lot better to see. You're in a one on one situation with a guard. You want to be able to disrupt the play, and he gets free and kind of disrupts the passing lane a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it wasn't a great pass. Could have been because he was there. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, I, I, this was a much more impressive pass rush rep. This is kind of more of what I'd be looking for um, in, a, in a one-on-one matchup with your one tech. Yeah, it shows much more of a high motor, more of a want to, to actually get to that quarterback compared mm-hmm. to those first two plays that we showed. I just really like that he had more of – I don't want to say he had a plan – but he was being more like tactical about yes. this pass rush. You could see him start on, uh, I guess that's Yonda's left shoulder. And then as he gets the initial push on that left shoulder, you see him counter that because he knows Yonda has to correct. He has to go and make up for that. And because of that, he goes and tries to go outside onto Yonda's right shoulder. And it, it's just more tactical. You know, it, it's smarter. It's more veteran savvy. You can see he doesn't just, oh, okay, I'm going to bull rush you. And that's that. Right. Like he's actually being tactical about his pass rush. And it's not like this dude is using, using a lot of moves. He's just using his hands. Like you mm-hmm. said, he's just using his hands, being active and working hard to get to the quarterback. He didn't do a lot exactly to get to the quarterback. He didn't really make a play. I don't even think that could be chalked up as a pressure, Yeah, but it's so much better than those first two reps that we showed. Right. Yeah. And that, that's, that's really you know, it's this still isn't like a fantastic rep, but this is a better rep than what we were referencing before. And I think this is an okay rep. I don't mm-hmm. I don't really have much of an issue with this rep. Um, it's you know, he's throwing he's throwing a fairly it's not a super um he, he's not spending a lot of time in the pocket, basically. Yeah. So um, you know, he does give it a little bit of a drop, but you know, he's the effort the effort was more there, and that was kind of really what I was looking for out right. of that. Same. Um, this one is, uh, another one where he kind of gets, gets in the passing lane a little bit, and this is a, a successful bull rush this time where he's getting right in the power right away. Um, they decide to double Ed and, 
he, he kind of makes him pay for it a little bit. I do think that he does a good job of at least disrupting the passing lane, and he's got his eyes on Lamar and making sure that he's in the way. Um, but you know, it's it's he ends up finding the, finding a gap, and it's it's once again, it this isn't a great rep, but it's a better rep than what we were seeing before. Still, <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you completely. This is exactly the uh, the counterpoint to if you're gonna double team Ed you're you need to get beat by star like yeah we that's the whole point of what we want from this bill's defensive front we mm-hmm. want whoever isn't double teamed on the interior to win and yeah. then that makes it easier for the guys on the edge to win on one-on-ones like yes he doesn't i don't even think this could be drawn up or called a pressure a qb pressure no, but i don't think so he's he drove back the the guard six to seven yards on mm-hmm. a bull rush like i i'd prefer that compared to him just being flushed out and just thrown to the side like those first two plays like right. you're still maintaining that run gap so mm-hmm. so lamar can't scramble yep. but you're also you're like closing that run gap because you're six to seven yards into the backfield Lamar has to go like squeak through that C gap in between his or that B gap in between his guard and tackle in that one. So yeah, once again, I'd like him to make a sack, but I'm like, they're not paying at uh star to make, to get sacks. They're, they're paying star to free up other people to make tackles at or near the, the line of scrimmage that that's not why stars being paid the right. way he's being paid. Right. And then, the, you know, the whole uh, Ed being double team thing, the reason Ed's being double team is he's doing a better job pass rushing. So the center, the center has his choice here of who he wants to cover. He's kind of uh, by himself. And so he's hanging out and waiting to see who's got the better rush. He said, oh, it's this guy. I'm going to go with him. And he made the right decision because I think Ed probably would have made a nice play if he had gone over and double teamed uh, uh, Star instead. And Star didn't really do anything. They still made the completed pass. So it's this is a win for the for the offense. This is a, this is definitely not um, not a good play for for the Bills defense. I'd say they lost the rep overall. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's it's just one of those things where you got to make them pay. And if you're not, then then you're not doing your job correctly. So. Let's see here. <clears throat> this is a good one, though. I like this one. This is this is going right back to that uh, being the anchor, and it's kind of almost like that um, that first play we saw of his where he um, was able to shed the block and make the tackle. This time, however, he is taking up a double team, so Ed Oliver can make the play, and that is this this was the play where I was like, this is what Star's job is. He this takes is 2021 team. Buffalo Bills defense. Yes, exactly. He takes the double team. Star is gone. He, I mean, he even sheds it. He's he's not. He's ready to make a tackle if the guy. Mm-hmm. He kind of forces um, uh, the bounce outside because he sheds his block. He forces him right into Ed Oliver. Um, so yeah, not only does he take up a double team, he beats the double team, and then while doing that, um, he allows Ed to be in one uh, one on one coverage and, and be able to make the play himself. So, uh, yeah, this was just this was probably my favorite rep of the day for him. No, I, I like I don't even know how to praise it any differently. This is just a great play. It, like this is exactly what we want to see this year. We want to see him eating those double teams to make it easier for people like Ed Oliver to eat on plays like this. Because you look at you look at Ed and he's just tossing around an old an older but. That's Marshall Yonda. Like Marshall Yonda was one of the Big best dude. guards in the NFL for years. Like I think 2019 was his last year in the league. But I mean, this this is one of those plays where Marshall Yonda's like, man, these young guys, they're they're good. Maybe maybe I need to hang them up. Like mm-hmm. this, that's why you draft Ed Oliver. But yeah. you don't get the best out of Ed Oliver if you can't put him in one on ones. Right. So this this is exactly where getting star back. It's it's gonna help out Ed, but. Of course, it's all on Ed. Ed's got to do his due diligence as well. Yeah, and um, the the whole thing. Uh, the one more thing that I'll mention about this one is that seventy seven breaks off um, to to go block Milano, and when he does that, Star makes him pay, and he's available in that gap now. I mean, the center also left. I don't know what the hell he was thinking, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, he 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 was basically he had already beat the center. Um, pretty much when 77 left, he's won that rep already. So um, that's another thing where it's you're, you're making them pay for leaving the double team. So yep. that's another another positive there. Absolutely. Yeah, this one um, <clears throat> is uh, another just another 
another clogging machine. I mean, I don't even does he even move at all here? Maybe a, a yard, at, a half a yard. I had it at negative one yards into the Bills defense. Yeah, that's I mean, the, his his ability to just stop and just be an anchor here uh, mm -hmm. is is pretty impressive. Yeah, one yard back and he's not moving any more from there for the rest of the play. Uh, and then the the whole entire play happens right there in front of him. So. Um, that's, this is another one of those examples where he is forcing those two guys to stay on the double team because he's too much of a handful to, uh, to be there by himself. He actually does break off of both of those guys eventually too. So, yeah. um, pretty, I, I don't know how someone can do that. Just take on two like 300 pound mm -hmm. men, um, trying to push him back and he just doesn't move. So, uh, that it is pretty impressive what he, what he can do in situations like that. I think the main thing I want to see with this play, because this play is great in terms of just looking at Star and isolating him in a vacuum and being like, okay, cool, he ate the, he ate the double team, he did what he's responsible to do on this play and just take up space. The thing I, I'm curious, like, this this was a broken play. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd like to know what would have happened on this play right. if, if Mark Ingram knew which side of Lamar Jackson to go on or Lamar right. Jackson or Lamar. knew which side to hand the ball off, whatever. Yeah. I if think it it's um I think it was Ingram here that uh that made the mistake. It's tough to tell based on the offensive line. I don't know. Um I would say I would say so because there's an unblocked man on the end of the line of scrimmage on the, on the right uh, on the right side of our screen here. That's Good probably point. who the read man was supposed to be. Yeah. Um that would be my guess anyway. So yeah, yeah I'm so pretty sure Ingram is. screwed up here. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's really like the main thing for me on this play because I mean, we've all now seen we're we're 19 plays in. We've all seen a lot of examples of of star uh, eating up those double teams. But now I want to see what the outcome, uh, like mm -hmm. what happens as impact from star eating up double teams. Unfortunately, because it's a broken play, we don't get to find out on this play. But yeah, it's still just another feather in the cap. Like this dude can eat double teams. He can use one arm to stymie one 300 pound dude and one arm to do it again with someone else. So. Yeah. It's impressive, man. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that he will be bringing to the table that the Bills just I don't think really had last year. No, um, which no. is which is something that I don't think we've we've kind of mentioned that the Bills were really lacking that last year. Yeah. Um, this last one here I threw in just because um, it uh, falls into that athleticism um, where he's he's moving over to the sideline here. And I was really impressed. First of all, he's lined up in a three tech spot, which is fairly unusual for him. Um, uh, so it was interesting to see how he played out of position um, and he engages well, he's moving well, he's got control. Uh, he's only a step behind really, um, which is, which is not bad for a dude, his size being able to get out there and uh, really give maybe a, a five yard wide gap between himself and the sideline for Levi Wallace to make a tackle on. Um, so yeah, th this was another one of those um, surprising athleticism plays. Yeah. No, it, this whole thing, like I was so surprised with his lateral movement skills, mm -hmm. like so many times more than I thought I was going to see. He kept maintained that line of scrimmage and he ran along it and kept his block on there. But on this one, he took it a step further. He, he disengaged and he was running with the running back to make the play. Like the running back couldn't turn it upfield and go vertical because yep. star got out there. He got wide enough. But this then goes back to this idea of maybe I'll say it again. Maybe this is why he's asked to lose some weight. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe maybe he's not trying to add five, ten more pounds onto onto his playing weight by the time the year comes around. Maybe he's trying to play this year at three oh seven or whatever he said he was at because then he becomes more multiple. He's not just this only one tech guy that's only coming in on rundowns and he's a liability if the offense decides to pass maybe now he can actually pass rush maybe now he can make up that half a step and he's the one making the tackle at three yards instead of allowing it to get to six yards on this play you know maybe he gets so far outside that he forces a cut back inside i don't know there's just this play specifically the athleticism from a dude with his strength and his size and then you think about taking five pounds off of him. What would we get in 2021 if if we get the star that we see on these these Twitter little 10 second training clips? I'm I'm intrigued, man. I, I'm not going to sit here and say he's going to fix our defense, but I am intrigued because we haven't seen the dude since 2019.
Yeah, I think if anything, it'll be very interesting. And I think we're going to get a lot of answers about um, top priority of acquisition for the Bills. Um, because if Star is not doing his job, if he's not taking up the double teams, if he's not making making people pay in one-on-ones, then um, that's going to be the number one priority. And some, someone said it in the chat earlier that they would not be surprised to see a D-tackle number one uh, in next year's draft. Mm-hmm. I don't know about number one, but I would be very surprised if – if star does not play well, um, even if he does play well, I feel like they have to go for a 300 pound plus dude to sit in the one tech and take up double teams, um, regardless of, of, of whether or not star plays well, because that's just, that is kind of the, the big missing piece, um, of the defense right now. And I really think could kind of bring everything together if they were, um, if they were, if they were able to figure that out. Yeah. I think that that's a whole different can of worms. It makes it really interesting. Cause Obviously, there's the whole contract situation with Star. It may, he's a lot more, he's a lot more of a palatable cut after this year. He's not someone we can cut this year. Um, it's just too much of a dead cap. But next year, it's it's plausible. It's something we could do. I was a proponent of drafting a one tech this year, uh, mm-hmm. but that probably just would have made it harder to make decisions on this defensive line that's already really stacked, and it's going to be tough to make a final call on who's making the roster this year. But I actually kind of feel like what they do next year in terms of the bills, that is what they do in the draft next year at defensive line is actually going to be a lot more dependent on Harrison Phillips play than Mm. it is on stars play. Because like I said, stars getting older, it's a lot more palatable to cut him next year compared to this year. And Harrison's in a contract year. So it's going to depend on how he plays this year. And if the bills feel like he's a, he's a proper investment. He's a proportional investment to what they think they can get out of him and his market value. So that's kind of my, my two cents on the the interior of the defensive line moving forward. Cause bottom line is we, we do need an influx of capable and effective youth there. And, and for all we know, it's Harrison Phillips. Right. Yeah. Well, we, you know, He's in a contract. He got injured early in his career. He's, you know, maybe he hasn't been quite back in all himself or hasn't, you know, there's no off season last year. Um, you know, we could definitely make some excuses for the guy. Um, but yeah, if he puts it all together this year, maybe that's not something that we need to go after so aggressively. Um, if he's able to be that guy and I hope he, I hope he is, um, you know, it would be nice to, to know that that guy's already on the roster for you and you don't have to worry about it as much. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think that, um, that the one tech position and and having a good one tech right now would really be able to kind of bring that defense together a lot um, in terms of both pass rush and run stopping. So that that's kind of my, um, you know, star is a, is a huge part of, I think how the, how the bills defense is going to play this year. 100%. Uh, One thing I would like to bring up is I saw this in the comment section and I just want to make sure that we, we touched on it. Uh, We see John saying you're seeing Oliver get double teamed a lot. And then right before that lone wolf asked, how does star being back prevent Oliver from getting double teamed this season? And I think that's a good question that we can try and answer. Uh, But it's, it's really interesting considering we saw Oliver get double teamed as much as we did on just 20 plays that we showed you. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any thoughts? What do you What do you think on that, Clay? Yeah, so I mean, you know, with with Lone Wolf's question here, um, it's by by winning his own reps. If Star can win his reps when Oliver's doubled, then you have a decision you have to make: which guy do you want to double? Um, if if he's not winning his reps, if he's not causing any any disruption or anything like that, they're going to double it every time and let that let that one on one block go to Star, and then you've got your your better interior pass rusher taken away. So um, you know it's 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 tough because he also has to then himself become a better pass rusher at least be more disruptive or exactly or, or something like that or, or you know make they they have to make that offense be so worried about him um putting get you know blowing up the pocket basically that they need to put two guys on him to make sure that he doesn't get through um i think he's really you know we've said he's so good at anchoring himself he can he can stop and give up one yard and nothing else against uh against a double team but i think he does he needs to work on the other side of that and mm-hmm. pushing through uh and, you know especially in those one-on-one uh those one-on-one blocking situations he needs to be able to push through and really drive that guy into the pocket and, and cause a little bit of havoc so that's my that's that's my take on it what's what's your opinion no this is exactly why i've been trying to push this narrative of like hey maybe this is why he lost like five pounds because he mm-hmm. just needs to be more than 
a one tech. There isn't like we saw this year, the Tyler Shelvins of the world in the draft. Like they didn't get drafted until the mid to late rounds because you're only playing a one tech on so many downs. There's so many useful downs that you can get out of players like that. The bills want guys that can do multiple things. They don't want a dude that can just wear one hat and that's mm. it. That's it. His game is restricted to just that. So I think you put it perfectly in saying like, it's up to star. It's up to him to actually do something on those one-on-one -on -one reps. And then from there, where I'll take it is then it's up to the offense because if star does or doesn't whatever he does in terms of double teams or just one-on-one -on -one reps, then it's up to the offense. It's the up to the offense to make their decision on how they want to scheme up protections and run blocking, whatever they want to do. It's all dependent on stars play. Cause if star mm. can't be double teams, it's going to be obvious. Or if he can't be one-on-ones like, why wouldn't you just double ed and commit your one-on-one -on -one to, to star? And then if obviously if stars just blowing up every one-on-one, -on -one, then you put the offense in a bind and they're going to have to like really second guess themselves all game on which, which player on the interior to double team. So I think you put it perfectly in saying it's a lot of this is just going to be on, on star. Yeah. And I, you know, it's the whole losing weight thing. I don't care how the dude wins. He can win. Maybe he's trying to win with speed and athleticism and being a little more quick and using his hands a little bit more. That's fine. I don't care if he wins that way. I don't wouldn't care if he put on an extra 20 pounds of muscle and, you know, decided to purely just put guys on their ass. That would be fine with me too. Um, but he needs to, he needs to win those reps when he's in one-on-one -on -one and uh, that that's, that's kind of like my bottom line for him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you know, for, for any one tech, you know, Harrison Phillips falls into that boat as well. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they got their, their, they got their work cut out for him over there and it'll be interesting to see. I think one of the things I think I'm most interested to see is how many different positions are these guys going to play on the defensive line? Mm. Like the entire defensive line can play. I mean, we even saw a star in three tech one time. It's not going to happen commonly. Um, but pretty much anyone on that defensive line can play a lot of it can play at least two different spots um very efficiently on the defensive line so it'll be interesting to see how how that kind of plays out as well yeah it could make life a lot easier for star if he just gets to sit home in that one tech position because he mm -hmm. did kind of seem out of out of spot when he was in that three tech role and it it did kind of seem a little uh almost clunky from a three tech role like he wasn't really in his in his proper home but yeah right. no that that will be interesting to see how the entire defensive line is utilized this year, especially with the the two draft picks that we already covered. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for me. I feel like um, we've, we've really drilled home those, those main points with, um, you know, with, with everything in his strengths and what he needs to do. Um, but yeah, that, that whole season off really puts a, puts a wrinkle in things. And I think that's kind of why he's, he's been so talked about is people want to know um, yeah. if that, if that drop off from 2019 to 2018, you know, with, with Ed's performance, with the pass rush as a whole, um, how big of a, how big of a, a factor was star in that. So I think we're, we're going to get the answer. You know, there's no Jordan Phillips anymore to, to mm -hmm. bail him out. Sometimes it's all on star. So I think that's, that's going to be, it's going to be good for us. Cause we'll know the answer after this, hopefully. Yeah. I th yeah. We're definitely going to get our answer in terms of what star is and isn't for the Buffalo bills very quickly in, in this 2021 season. But I don't know. I, th I think it'll be, I think it'll be all right for 2021. We're just kind of going to have to bite that bullet for what it is because of his contract and, and what mm. it is. So we're going to have yep. to take what we can get really at the bottom that that's the bottom line for me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's tough. Um, thank you guys, everyone for, for sticking around in the chat. Um, uh, yeah, this, there was, there was one comment I wanted to pull up. Um, yeah. Best possible scenario. Horrible Harry improves. Absolutely. If we can get him yeah. um, playing better. There was, there was one that I want to address um, and it's because I don't know the answer to it. And I want to point out that I don't know. I don't have the answer to this. I don't, um, I don't one watching one text is not really something that I do in my free time that much. Um, but uh, I guess yeah, so I really don't know the answer. I think I kind of want to go through now and watch some of the better one text in the league to, to get some of a, uh, a baseline there, but I'm sorry, Chris, I don't have an answer for you. Do you have any, any opinions on that or not? If I had to guess, Chris, what I'll tell you is I actually just canceled my PFF subscription. So I, I can't even like tell you with the grades, like who did best, but my, my guess is probably Vita Vea. If he did 
didn't get injured. I, I can't even, I don't know if he got injured or not in 2019, but that's my guess. It's probably Vita Vea. Um, I don't know though. I, I really don't have an answer for you, Chris. I'll try it. I'll try to track you down or put it in the comments section if I get an answer, but I, yeah. I really don't have one for you. Sorry, bud. If anyone wants to watch really good uh, defensive tackle play, um, you can watch Chris Jones in the AFC Championship game last year because <laughs> he uh, that not is, a one tech, but he's not a one tech. Team. It was very good defense. That that was the definition of making a guy pay when you're in in one on one coverage. So, um, yeah, sorry I had to bring it up, but yeah. um, kind of just stuck out in my mind of very good defensive tackle play there. <clears throat> Chris, you're late, man. You came into the show early. Um, I don't know what that number. I don't know what he was trying to say either. What's it it like 59? I don't know what the 59 is, Chris. I'm sorry, but uh, his hand was big. If if that's the question, (laughs) I shook his hand. It was big. Uh, So the the rumors are true. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Uh, Z-Bot was really, uh, really talking up uh, Josh Allen's golf game too. So. I, oh, dude, honestly, the most impressive one, this is off topic, end of the show. Sorry, guys. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the best one, I think, in my opinion, was was Tasker, who's really surprised oh, me at the, really? at, the, at the golf thing. He was hitting it, I think, the loudest, um, then louder than anyone, harder than anyone. Even Harrison Phillips would go up there and whack it. And then after Tasker gets up there, it was, it was incredible, man. I, that guy's got a hell of a swing. That's actually really funny. Yeah. I didn't know that. All right. Well, I'll uh, before we take off, we got to let them know. You guys made it really difficult for us. Like whenever we did the last poll, it it broke down to a tie between Star and Spencer Brown. So we figured we'd do Star because he was being talked about more. And yeah, that that's kind of why we did Star first. But Spencer Brown is next week. So next Saturday, tune in. We're going to be breaking down rookie Spencer Brown. Uh, I imagine Pierre is going to be all for it. He's going to hype it up like crazy. He might mm-hmm. actually enter the chat. All that stuff. Pierre's going to be all over the Spencer Brown film session. He's probably going to plug that thing. Like, oh, absolutely. To no end. <laughs> I think I want to take the contrarian point just so that I, <laughs> I can get yelled at by Pierre a little bit. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that'd probably be good, good fun. I, I'm sure he would enjoy that as well. Yeah, no, it'll be good. I'm excited for it. Yeah. But anyway, thank you everyone for coming and staying with us, watching with us. Uh, for those of you that have been here start to finish, you guys are awesome. I really, we really appreciate everyone that yep. comes in and watches with us. Um, and if you're watching on the, on the replay, thank you for that as well. Um, we appreciate all the views and everyone and, uh, you know, everyone's always super nice in the comments section and offering good stuff. So, um, we appreciate you and we, we hope to see you next week when we're doing Spencer Brown. But, uh, besides that, all I got to say is go bills, go bills.